Over a decade ago, Valve's Steam Machine project aimed to push Linux-powered gaming into the mainstream. It never really caught on, but it did pave the way for the Steam Deck and all the various gaming handhelds that have followed it. Now, in 2025, Valve have made their own flavoured version of Linux available for anyone to download and make their own Steam machines. Which is what I've done. Technically, a Steam machine can be made out of any PC, but if you want to use official SteamOS and not have any compatibility problems, it helps to have hardware that's close to the Steam Deck. In other words, a fairly modern AMD Ryzen CPU and some pre-9000 series Radeon RX graphics. While that still could be a monstrous X3D chip and a 7900XTX, there's something about using it on a humble mini PC that just feels right. I like the idea of this as a kind of backlog buster, something for tearing through games you've been meaning to play for years but never got round to. The system I'm trying out this time is a Ryzen powered budget mini PC provided by Minisforum. The 750L Slim isn't actually all that slim, but it is a compact, lightweight system that can be easily hidden away in a drawer or cupboard and could fill the role of home server or everyday PC for light use. For this video, it's going to be playing the role of games console. The APU is pretty basic, it's running a Ryzen 5 7545U mobile chip with two full power cores and four efficient low power ones, and graphics are provided by a Radeon 740M iGPU. It's fairly capable considering the low power consumption, quiet fan and £299 price tag, but calibrate your enthusiasm, this is still sub Steam Deck level graphics performance and it's a couple of tiers below what we'd normally consider appropriate for a gaming PC, so I won't be asking too much of it. On the subject of setting expectations, I have a conclusion I want to share straight away. Don't, um, d don't actually do this. Bazite OS is the current recommended Linux version for people looking to get a Steam Deck experience on a desktop machine. It has better driver support for stuff that isn't featured in a modern handheld, and it's probably going to be updated more often too. I had a few issues while setting up, with neither Bluetooth or Wi-Fi working out of the box, and I had to shift into the beta update program just to get the performance overlay to work. I'm using SteamOS rather than Bazite for this video because, well, it's what we do on YouTube. We do random stuff, so you don't have to. It looks like 1440 or even 1080p are a bit much for the Ryzen APU in Bioshock Infinite. 720p, meanwhile, runs near flawlessly capped at 60fps, and considering the era this game was released, it doesn't detract much from the visuals at all. This is a bit of a classic, and it's one I've previously played about two-thirds of the way through, but I lost my save, and these days I just tend to play the first half hour over and over again. Another Xbox 360 era title, the first Red Dead Redemption arrived on PC last year and is a decent match for an APU, if not quite an Ultra HD experience. At 720p I could crank the settings to high and still maintain 60fps, which resolution aside means we're actually getting a better experience than on PS4. As someone who didn't own a console at the time, I hadn't actually played this game until the PC port was released beyond some pretty bad experiences with PS3 emulation a while back, so maybe I'll finally get around to playing it. Here's a new one for me that I picked up recently in a Humble Bundle. Persona 4 Golden is a remaster of a late PS2 RPG, and honestly it's not that big of a remaster. Some assets still look decidedly 6th gen, though the 2D art does look all crisp on modern displays. The bright side is that it runs pretty flawlessly at 1440p 60fps on this APU. Despite the good reputation the Persona series has among gamers, I don't think it's for me. It's 20 years since my high school days, and I really don't want to play games that take me back there. 
even if they are full of fun characters with no regard for their own testicular health. Another one from a recent Humble Bundle, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun is what is pejoratively called a boomer shooter. Obviously, it's a great candidate for playing on a weaker system, though console-style controls aren't really a natural fit in my opinion. Also, this is one of the few games I've tested in this video that has upscaling as a built-in option, and I did briefly try it, but I don't know if it's because of the pixelated art style, but I think I prefer just running it natively in 720p. The Forgotten City is a game I heard about from video essayist Jacob Geller a few years ago, and I've been meaning to play it for ages. Originally a Skyrim mod, this first-person mystery set in ancient Rome feels very much like a long series of Elder Scrolls quests, only with visuals that are a bit of a step above what Bethesda's churning out. That does all mean that 60fps is kind of out of the question. I didn't reduce the cap to 30fps, but it might be worth doing as it's only running in the 30s and 40s most of the time, even at 720p. I don't remember where I first heard buzz around the Outer Wilds, but I know Skill Up tends to wax lyrical about it. It's another one that can be deceptively heavy on a PC. I've struggled to get a flat 60fps on the past on even significantly more powerful iGPUs than this, so I turned quality down as well as resolution, which is particularly harmful to shadow quality, and in this weird solar system full of tiny planets and day cycles that are measured in minutes rather than hours, you see a lot of shadows. Sifu had the potential to be a top-notch licensed Kung Fu Panda movie tie-in, but the opportunity was missed. This, and The Forgotten City, contributed a lot of the time it took to making this video, because I forgot to stop playing and do some damn work. 720p and a smooth 60fps are no problem here, so I'm going to assume my appalling attempts at parry timing are a skill issue, not a hardware one. Hades 2 is, let me check, still in early access, so I guess I shouldn't really be recommending you spend your money on it. That being said, Supergiant games have proven themselves over their last four releases, or, well, I assume Pyre is good, but I never got round to playing it, so maybe it's safe to cough up £22.50 on what really is shaping up to be another brilliant game that runs flawlessly on integrated graphics, even at 1080p and above. I don't know of an equivalent term to boomer shooter that would apply to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, a metroidvania that's very much on the vania side of that particular portmanteau. Like Persona 4 Golden, the graphics and overall vibe are very PS2-esque, and 1440p 60fps is absolutely not out of the question here. Ooh, how about Metroid Senior? Nightrunners is another early access game that I probably shouldn't recommend, but it's just so freaking cool. Like, is this 4K, 1080p, 480i? Who cares? Everything's hidden under a layer of neon and electro and analog VHS grime that makes stuff like resolution and image quality redundant. You start off buying a used car that stinks of cigarettes with some money you got from a shoebox, and before you know it, you're street racing to pay off a 4 million yen debt. I'm terrible at this game, I can't see what the hell I'm doing or where the hell I'm going half the time. But god it feels great while I'm doing it. Despite the hardware limitations, I like the idea of doing more Steam Machine videos, so look forward to seeing more in the future. Maybe featuring some more powerful hardware and probably using Bazite. Thanks again to Minus Forum for the mini PC, check out the link below if you're interested in picking up the 750L Slim, and if you're into more premium products, why not watch this video about their weird ITX motherboard with a built-in X3D CPU.
Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.